All right, welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbing. And in this episode, I have a new toy. You have a new toy? What is it? Infrared camera for the iPhone. Whoa. And so what we're going to be doing with this episode is showing you exactly why I think this is one of the biggest safety things you can get, one of the coolest um, troubleshooting things, and exactly how this can be of use to you to kick up your RV game into notches unknown. Why'd you do that? I don't go know. back. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and get back into love subbing, shall we? Yep. Okay, let's get, take a look at what came with our FLIR, which I think stands for Forward Looking Infrared Radar. It came in two boxes. One is this FLIR power bank, so maybe this is where you, how you charge it, which is pretty cool. It looks like this can be used for multiple different devices, so that would be another. Yeah. So that wasn't an add-on, it came with it, right? It came with it, yes. So, a little... Look, looks like a charging pad, right? Charging pad. That aside. And a cord that goes with it. Yep, we can always use charging stuff. Let's uh, take a look. I guess the thing is, is if you can't figure out how to open it, you're not qualified to use it. Where's how do millennials do unboxings? There you go. See the heat. Pretty fancy. And there it is. Let's go ahead and read the directions and get this puppy ready. Look at, look at the box. Easy. Pretty fancy, huh? Fancy. All right, let's get into the safety part of this and why this is a good safety tool. So in my previous life, one of the things that I was responsible for was the maintenance of a large manufacturing factory here in the United States. And I was responsible for ensuring that the equipment was up and running, not only efficiently, but safely. And one of the things that we used to always do is we would pay this dude once a year to come into the facility and we paid him a lot of money. And he would take pictures of all of our electrical panels. And with an infrared imaging camera, a lot more expensive than this one, but he would take pictures of it. And what he would be looking for is something exactly like this that you can see from this picture. And you can see this hot spot in this electrical connection. That's indicating either a lot of resistance that's generating heat or a loose connection. And that would indicate to us that there was a safety issue and would have to go ahead and fix it. So what I'm gonna do first and foremost here is I'm gonna go ahead, the first thing we're gonna do with this is a safety check. And so I'm gonna turn on a whole bunch of stuff, let my panel here heat up, and I'm gonna take an image of it. We'll check it out to see if there are any loose connections or any issues with my power converter in just one second. So we're inside the RV and we're gonna go ahead, this is my power converter. I've got fans running, I've got lights going, we're hooked into shore power, so, Let's go ahead and take an image of our connections here, see what we get. This is the area here that I really want to look at. All right, we're gonna go ahead and analyze that image. So here you can see the image that I took. And really I wasn't looking too much at the fuses, but rather at the connections where the 12 volt uh, wires come in to make sure that there was nothing hot there and everything was looking pretty good. You can see that bottom right, there's actually nothing there. So I think that that was just a simple ghost image. The 12 volt side of things looked pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the 120 volt side of things, and if, which is under this panel here. And if you didn't heed my little pop-up bubble before about being qualified to open an energized electrical panel, you need to pay attention to that now because 120 volt will make you real dead real fast. And this is the dangerous part. So because I'm gonna be opening this panel that's metallic with metal screws, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off power before I do any of that work. Power's been shut off. I'm gonna go ahead and open this cover. And we're going to re-energize the panel and go ahead and check the uh, negative bus, positive bus. 
All right, so we've got the cover off. We're gonna go ahead and take some pictures here. How's it looking? Pretty good. All right, so we've taken our pictures and just one other little uh, pro tip here, just in case you're wondering what that orange thing is. When I went to uh, do some work in here, I noticed that Airstream had done connected those three wires with a wire nut. Okay, and I know from my experience on boats that wire nuts are not allowed to be on a boat because of the motion and the ability of the wire nut to screw. They're great for homes, but for boats they're not allowed. So I went and improved that to a Wagyu lever connector. And those things are awesome. They're super easy to use and I absolutely love them. They were on all of our, um, the butt wiring for our boat was uh, consisted of all of those uh, lever connectors. So that's why I learned about those. It's a good tip. So here's the image on the 120 volt side and again what I was looking for were the connections where both the positive and the negative wires go in and you can see here certainly on the positive that there's no hot spots and when you look at the image really the negatives um, that's just a reflection off the top there there was really nothing uh, abnormal there either which is good. Okay the last couple of pictures we're going to take are on the back side of the power converter where we've got this what I call a bird's nest of wiring. Airstream really needs to hang out with the folks at Hallberg Rossi if they want to know how to do wiring properly, even the folks at Beneto. So let's go ahead and get some pictures of this. In this image, you can see the fresh water fill hose in the center there and just an absolute bird's nest of wires. But again, nothing to be of concern. So I'm also up front uh, where all of the stuff from the 12 volt, the 12 volt uh, positive and negative bus bar, my shunt for my Victron battery monitor, the disconnect switch. So we're going to go ahead and take a photo of that as well. See if there's any hot spots. Get nice down in there. And to gain access to this spot, we had to do all of that, which means taking the boards off the bed and taking the mattress off the bed as well. Something interesting? I don't know. We were hoping for nothing interesting. I don't think it's anything interesting. I just want to get in there and get a little closer up. That's why we do this. And by the way, that cargo net right there is awesome for the bed. Gives me a little place to put my book and my phone and a flask of water. Highly recommend it. If you have Velcro walls. Well, if you got it much closer, you have your face oh, in I'm it. I'm just trying to identify what I see as a little bit of a hot spot. Okay, clearly it was time to call someone with better qualifications than me. She says she's got smaller hands, so she can get down in there. So what's your technical assessment? I, I don't think it's a hot spot. I think it's it, there's a hole that leads outside right there underneath that rug. Yeah. And it's shining light into the airstream. So I'm thinking that's what it's picking up because it's magnifying it. It's probably got the heat from the A-frame. Probably yeah. I mean, and I I think it's a, I think it's that hole behind the wiring. Okay. It doesn't look like it's wiring itself. All right. And in this normal image here, you can see what we were looking at and where that heat was coming in. It's amazing how sensitive this thing is. You can see from the shunt here, that somewhat hotter temperature there in the upper left, that is simply because of the light shining in from an open window. So when people ask, well, why can't you just touch something to see if it's hot? It's a sensitivity that you're looking for here. One of the big uses that I really want to use this thing for is to check out my tires and my hubs while towing. And you can see here this first image is of the truck tire just sitting in the driveway and then after driving it for a while you can see how hot the brake caliper got. So I'm going to be looking at our tires for hot spots, I'm going to be looking at uh, the hubs for any hot spots, and I think it's going to be a real game changer for tire safety. Also I'm not sure if ever I mentioned this in some previous video, but we had a pedestal, I believe it was in Alabama, that there was a loose connection and that ended up heating up my plug to the point that you can see the damage here. So I think a great application would be to take the camera kind of do a scan of the plugs and to see if you've got any hot spots that could cause a problem. And finally, there's also some kind of home uses that you can use. Here's an image of my garage and you can clearly see where a lot of the heat is escaping from underneath the door. Maybe I need some better insulation. So what do you think of it? I thought it was interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool tool. You know, I thought my endoscope was a cool tool. Being able to look inside my tanks, 
seeing the condition of the hot water heater tank, being find, able to find lost things. Find exactly and get into those nooks and crannies where you just can't get into the sea and it's even got a little hook you can grab. Right. I thought that was cool, but I think that this is gonna up our game big yep. time here. You can do a lot of things with it. Absolutely. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And click the subscribe if you haven't already done so. And comment below if you have an interesting gadget that you would like to share. We come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.